here once again for Cat and Mouse. Hi viewers, it's been a long time, but we're back creating more content for our fabulous store here in Chicago. So the very first game that we're going to look at for our game review series is Deus, which was released at Essen back in 2014. Now it's made it stateside very recently. And if you haven't checked it out yet, it's a really nice tight but light game. That's my new favorite terminology, a tight but light game that you can play in about an hour, but still has a really thoughty and meaty decision. So let's take a look at the rules. Setup for Deus is really simple and very well laid out in the rules. You're going to be putting a series of map tiles out in a design based on the amount of players. And there's a diagram for a two player, a three player, and a four player game. This is the setup for a two player game. You're going to put some victory points on the barbarian huts here. And then you're going to set yourself up with one of these player mats with two wooden pieces of each type laid out. There's matching pictures, so it's really easy to set it up, plus some starting resources, starting points, starting money, and five starting cards. Now, on your turn, you're going to do only one of two things. You're either going to play one of these five cards from your hand, or you're going to discard some amount and draw back up to five. But we're going to go into those in much greater detail because they're a bit more complicated than it seems. First, let's talk about playing a card. Now, there's a couple card features that you should be aware of. First, each card is color-coded and has that same symbol uh, that matches the wooden pieces that it corresponds to. Each card also has a cost that you have to pay, which is up here in the top left. So to be able to build or play this card, you're going to have to pay one wood. And most of the cards are some combination of resources and money. These being resources and these being money. And then finally, there is a power on the bottom here that is explained both in text and in picture form. Much like a lot of other uh, card-based games like Seven Wonders, this whole bulk here where the picture is is mostly just art for art's sake. So there are two requirements that I need to match before I can successfully play this card. First, I'm going to need to be able to pay the cost, which we've already talked about. And second, I'm going to have to have at least one of the buildings of that type already queued up here on my player match. So if we were playing this orange card, you'll notice you start the game with two of all of these types of tokens. Because I'm going to have to play one of those tokens onto my map underneath uh, my card here. So if I don't have either of those two things, I cannot play that card this turn. I'll either have to pick a different card or I will have to discard and draw more instead. But luckily I do have everything I need to play this card, so I'm going to play it. I'm going to stack it here above my player aid, obviously, I give myself a little bit more room in real life. And then I'm going to place that once I've paid the cost and then I'm going to place the building of that type for my very first building starting on the edge of the board. But if I already had some buildings out on the board, maybe like that, I would have to place it either in the same spot as one that I own or in an adjacent spot. Now, understandably, uh, one of your tokens here is a boat, and the only thing that can go for the most part on water are boats, and obviously boats are not going to be able to go on land, so that's going to be for all the other building types are going to be able to go on land, so that just makes sense. Um, but then once I have placed my, I bought my card, I've placed my piece, then I'm going to activate the power of that card, which in this case, I'm going to get gold for each mountain that I occupy. So each of those uh, rocky looking places. So now I would just take that immediately. Now it might be that I had placed and played and purchased a second orange card from a couple turns uh, before. So maybe I had uh, another build the orange building out like that. Now, if this were the case, after I've paid for my card and activated the power, you'll notice that I've stacked this on top of my first orange card that I purchased a couple turns ago. And in fact, I get to do all of the powers that are in this stack. So then I would get to do this second power here if that was from an older card. So you can actually come up with some interesting chains of powers as you go through. But that chain is limited because you're never going to be able, typically, to access those powers more than five times because you only have five buildings of that type. So that's going to limit the amount of uh, times you're going to be able to add to this stack because you're only going to be able to buy five of those cards because every time you buy a card, you have to place the matching building. 
Now, in this example, if I've already placed two orange buildings, I started with uh, two orange buildings here, and now I have no more buildings. So how am I going to get more of those wooden buildings? Because without those wooden buildings, I can't buy more cards. Well, that takes us to the second thing you can do on your card, uh, excuse me, on your turn, which is discard and draw more cards. Second thing that you can do on your turn is discard some cards to be able to draw back up some new ones. It's also our way that we can renew some of these wooden buildings, which we already know are absolutely necessary for being able to then build and play new cards. So let's say I really, I like the way my orange card strategy here is going. I'm really hoping I can discard some cards and get some new ones. Maybe these are the four cards I have left in my hand. Now I could discard all four of these if I want and draw back up to five or you know any combination thereof. And this would be my entire turn, would be throwing some cards away and drawing some new ones back up to five. But I get a special power for each card that I discard. And the special power that I get depends on which card of these four I designate as my lead card. It could be any one. So maybe I'm going to say I like the looks of this purple one. I want to hang on to that one. I'm going to save it. But I'm going to discard these three. I'm not interested in them. Now, I'm discarding two pinks and a blue. So I could make the blue card the lead card, in which case I'm going to get the blue special power. Or I could designate that the pink card that I'm discarding is my lead card, in which case I'm going to get the pink power. And of course, I would just throw those cards away. I would take my special power, and then I'm going to draw back up to five. So in this case, since I'm still hanging on to one card that I like, I would draw four more cards off the top of the deck. Now, the special powers, very much in brief, you can check out some more of the details in the rules, but if you're using the blue power, you're going to be getting a money for each card that you discard. So in this example, let's say I was... Uh, I'll go back to my original hand here. I'm throwing away two pinks and a blue. Blue is the lead card. So since I'm throwing away three cards, I get to access this power three times since blue is my lead card. So I would get two money per card for a total of six money. If I'm making green my lead card, I get a resource for each card that I discard. If I'm making yellow my lead card, then I get additional cards above the five I would always get. With, uh, so I potentially would have a hand of up to 10 cards. If I'm uh, making orange my lead card, then I get victory points for each one that I discard. If I'm making pink, uh, which is military, my um, lead card, then I get to um, renew some of these wooden figures of my choice. And if I'm discarding uh, purple, which are the temples, then I get a special power of my choice. It's a wild special power. Now, in addition to each one of these, um, I get that special power, and I also get one building of that type. Pink is a little different. Just look up in the rules on that one. But let's say if I discarded a green card, I would get the green power somewhere between one and five times over, and I also renew one green building. And that's how you get those buildings, which we know, in turn, you're going to spend when you build. So now let's talk about your buildings and how they're going to look on the map because uh, the, there are a couple points seated here on the map and it's one of the ways uh, that you're going to trigger the end of the game. Now I already mentioned that when your very first card, let's say I built a green card, so I'm going to be building a green building here, you just need to start on the edge and thereafter your pieces need to be built either on that same space or in an adjacent space. Now it's totally okay for you to have more than one piece in the same space like this, but they all have to be different types of buildings. So different colors of cards were used to build those buildings. So I could never have two military guys or two production buildings in the same space. Also, no other color can be in this space with me. I own this little, this little speech bubble section here entirely to myself. Now we already, I mentioned that boats are a little bit different. Obviously they can only be on water and likewise um, none of my land-based buildings could be built on water, vice versa. But like in this example, now that I've built a boat here, that opens up this uh, brick area as being adjacent. So you kind of spread out organically around the map. Now these areas here are barbarian villages and they start with uh, a number of victory points on it equal to the number of spaces that are surrounding it. Now when a area is completely surrounded either by your pieces or a combination of yours and some other players, um, that's when those victory points gets awarded to a particular player. So it would look something like this, like so. So the moment I build that last building, it's completely surrounded by my pieces, so I would indeed get the victory points. Now there has to be at least one army in there, one of these uh, people-shaped buildings. 
Now it might be if there's a tie between two players who have the same amount of buildings, it's the armies, or excuse me, it's always the armies that are gonna dictate who actually gets the points. So armies is the deciding factor, not the amount of buildings. And once all of these village areas have been depleted. It is one of the two ways that the game end can be triggered. So there's going to be a pretty hot competition for those places. So the last type of card that we haven't talked about yet is also the last type of building we haven't talked about yet, and that is this purple temple spot. You'll notice there's a very distinctive cutout here in your player board, and that's because temples are a little bit unusual. They're a colorless uh, piece in that they are these white temple pieces. Anyone can build them. You don't need a pre you don't have to have any uh, wooden pieces sort of queued up ready to go. What you need though is prerequisites in all the other colors. So your very first temple card fits into this notch like this because all you need to have is the cost to build it, which is always one of every resource. Every temple also is some sort of victory point generator at the end of the game. So they're similar in that way as well. But if I want to build my second temple, the, before I'm allowed to, I have to have at least one of every other color already built. If I want to build my third temple, I'm going to need two cards of every color already built. So that's why there's that little notch down there saying, hey, I don't need any of these colors yet. But as soon as you get up to your second one, there should be at least one card of every color up here. Temples are also the second way that the game can end because when all the temples have been built, then the game is going to be over. Um, temples can be shared when they're built on the uh, landscape here. They can totally share spaces with some of your colored pieces, but all the same rules apply. Can't have more than one temple, identical buildings in the same area, and you can't have two player colors in the same area. But other than that, temples um, give you a lot of flexibility and a lot of uh, uh, game winning potential at the end of the game. So you might be asking, well, how do I win the game? Well, you're the, your end goal is to collect as many victory points as possible. Now, the obvious way of collecting victory points are these points that have to be sitting like beautiful, tempting targets right here on the map. And in fact, that is a very excellent way of getting points. But for the most part, you're gonna be using your cards as an engine to get points. You could be discarding orange cards. That's gonna get you a smaller amount of points. There's going to be a lot of cards on here that are going to be able, like uh, this military card, you can bleed points off of uh, uh, villages. We already talked about how temples are a lot of uh, victory point um, generating capacities. A lot of blue cards are trading in some sort of resource for money or victory points. So it's by building these cards that you're going to get a little engine going. And you're going to keep all these points face down until the end of the game so you can have your big reveal. And hopefully you will have more than anybody else at the end of the game. A full game with a full four players is probably going to take you about an hour and a half. Um, and that's a, a pretty uh, medium estimate uh, for most players because the turns in this tend to be quite quick and quite speedy. And it really keeps the game moving. All right, well, that gives you an idea of what to expect when you open up a box of Deus. Now, just a reminder that this is an overview. I did not cover every rule, so you're definitely going to need to read the rule book if you're going to sit down and play a game. But hopefully this will give you an idea of maybe if you're interested to check out this game. I've played this quite a few times myself, and this has become one of my real favorites over the last couple months. Now, as always, I like to give a couple recommendations of things that might be a good matchup to this if you've tried this, but you'd like to try something similar. And I like to match it up by either the theme or the mechanic. Now theme, it's gods, you're controlling a landscape, you know, eh, pretty general theme, but we did find some interesting matchups for the mechanics because what's really important in Deus is creating powerful combinations of cards, so card management, and also creating powerful combinations of pieces on the board, so a little, a little area control and piece management. So with those two ideas in mind, the first suggestion I have for you is seasons which is a three season game or three year game with four seasons each where you're trying to compete to be the best magician or wizard or magic user of the land and you're going to do so by creating powerful card combinations so there's your mechanic match to deus if you're looking for something that is more of the piece manipulation then i suggest you check out kingdom builder Yes, you do. your turn is driven by a card in Kingdom Builder, but really what might get you powerful combinations is moving around the pieces that you place on the board to score you the most points. And finally, if you're looking for one that sort of has a little mix of both, both where your pieces are on the board and the cards that you in your hand, then I would recommend checking out Takedo, which also has a really unique theme that you are experiencing life moments along a journey from one city to another with beautiful Japanese artwork. So this is a very unique one if you want to check it out. 
As always, all of these are available here at Cat and Mouse. Many of them as demos, which you can play right here in the store. And we're always happy to sit down, teach you a few rules, or even sit down and play it with you. So come on down and give any of these games a try.